Don't stress. <laughs> All right, and welcome to Wednesday night Bible study here at Expedition Church of the Triad. So glad you could join us. Trust that you'll have a great time being with us tonight. Hallelujah. Get your Bibles, open them up, get your notebooks out. Praise the Lord, so that we can uh, join us and study the Word of God with us. Praise God. We are teaching on, um, uh, I, guess, I guess, a couple of announcements. One is Saturday we're having our RMEI um, district meeting. If you're available to help us, you know, do what needs to be done. Uh, it's not going to be a real big meeting because a lot of my guys aren't coming. So, um, but I, we're, our plan is to cook burgers and dogs and, you know, that kind of thing. That could change. We could, we could change that at the last minute. But that, I just need a chef extraordinaire uh, to flip some burgers, run some dogs across the grill. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You consider yourself the chef extraordinaire. Okay. Do we have a grill back there? No, I'm not talking about the big one. I'm talking about just a regular. No, okay. I think we need a regular barbecue grill back there. Just a regular, you know, regular size without having to roll out the big pig cooker to cook. Yeah. Loads has got them on sale. All righty. Well, there may be one here by Saturday. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, tell you something else I'd like to do is like put, I'd like to get natural gas back there where they, they have everything with a converter that converts to natural gas. We just plug into the natural gas and run it. The orifice. Are, huh? We have natural gas here. Yeah. That, that's, that's where we get our gas from. Yeah. We don't have a tank. You like that? <laughs> that would be great. We just have a way to, you know, tie onto it and just cook all, use all our stuff. All right. Glory to God. I just have to see how much it would cost to be able to do that. <laughs> You'll never run out of gas. That's right. We cook all, I mean, just keep right on cooking pigs. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, thank you for joining us in the conversation. Praise God. But next week, no Wednesday night service, uh, Thanksgiving week. We will, um, <clears throat> I know something, we're on two, you know, two, two views. Uh, we never miss church, but it's also family time. And we, we want the families to give thanks together. Amen. And uh, I think it's a good thing to give thanks as a family home and, and spend time together as a family so we're together all the time hallelujah uh this year uh we will uh, I, I don't i gotta look at the calendar because i can't remember if we just said we're no no service on that december 24th or not i can't remember um what that was on the calendar or not we'll we'll get that clarified before then <laughs> we have a month <laughs> can y'all believe that christmas is upon us we hadn't even got through, you know, Thanksgiving gets you, and then Christmas is on you, like white on rice. And, do we, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, it's a Sunday, that's right. I don't know if we called, say we're not having church that, that day or not. Yeah, I don't remember what we put on the calendar. So I don't want to announce one thing, and the calendar says something else, and I've undone the calendar. All right, praise God. But we do know next Wednesday, no service, all right? We will have Sunday and Sunday, so you can join us on the bookends. Praise God, amen. All right. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, hasn't he? Being made a curse for us, was cur written curses to everyone that hangeth on a tree. Glory to God. Uh, last week, uh, past couple of weeks, we've talked about spiritual death is part of the curse. Remember the threefold curse? Spiritual death, poverty, and sickness. And, um, you know, we were redeemed from spiritual death. Through the, the new birth is our way back in. Amen. Glory to God. So we have re redemption through Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Uh, this, and so the second part here is poverty. Uh, look, if you will, into the 28th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. Glory to God. I had a conversation with a co-worker. On the way, he was on the way out the door the other day. And um, uh, one of those things was somebody ask you a question. And, you know, I don't, I'm not really sure if they're prodding me or, you know, because they already have an opinion. You know, I mean, he even told me, he said, well, we, we could, uh, um, we're probably going to disagree, you know, but hopefully peacefully. I'm thinking, well, if you don't like what I, you don't like what I got to say, I, okay. <laughs> I'm not going to sit and have a knock down drag. I'll fight with you over it. Good gracious. Amen. Hallelujah. Even if you are wrong. <laughs> Amen. You know, the, hallelujah. I mean, I have been wrong. Yeah. 
the, the real tragedy was I found out I was wrong about being wrong. <laughs> I'm just joking. Hallelujah. <coughs> it says here in Deuteronomy, let's, let's look um, real quick. We'll read the first verses. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, <coughs> that the Lord thy God, now let's stop real quick. How is the word Lord spelled? In capitals. So what that being? It's what? That's right, Y-H-W-H. Um, the teta, whatever that thing is. Trigram or something. <coughs> Where's Brother Bill? Glory to God. He's probably posted on the thing, but I don't have my, I don't bring my phone to the pulpit anymore. I did that for a, a few years and I decided, you know, it's more of a distraction than it is a help. And I just decided no more of that. I'm just going to minister and I'm not going to sit here and look, see who's looking or who's saying something, you know, hallelujah. It's on my desk. So I miss all the commentary because, you know, I don't go back and watch the whole, whole service again to see what somebody said. All right. Isn't that wonderful? So it's, 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 it's Jehovah or Yahweh is our, is, our is our translation of it. And um, so it's the covenant name of God. And so um, if thou shalt dil hearken diligently unto the voice of the covenant God, your covenant God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that your covenant God will set on thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall overtake thee. And shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. So here, we, three times, it's made reference to the covenant. This is covenant. Okay? This is the blessings and the cursings of covenant. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy ground, the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee and thy storehouses, and in all that thou settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy people, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto the land in the season, and to bless all the work of thy hand. Thou shalt lend to many nations that thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head, not the tail. Thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou shalt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. Now, this is great. All these blessings. Amen? But if thou shalt come, it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to, um, to observe all his commandments and statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and shall overtake thee. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind, the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke, and all that thou settest thy hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed, until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby they hath forsaken me. And the Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee, until he has consumed thee from off the land, whither thou goest to possess thee. And the Lord shall smite thee with consumption, with fever, with wrath and inflammation, with extreme burning, with the sword, the blasting, with, uh, and with mildew. And thou shalt, they shall pursue thee until, the, until thou perish. Now, at this point, we get the picture, don't we? 
And this goes on for another 40 verses. Okay. <laughs> right. I mean, it just goes on and on. It's kind of like lamb chops. Some of y'all remember lamb chops? This is the song that never ends. It just goes on and on, my friend. Well, this is the curse that goes on and on, my friend. You know? I mean, it just goes on and on and on. <clears throat> they get talking about M rods and all this kind of stuff. None of it sounds pleasant. But what is this? This is the curse of the law. I said, this is the curse. Poverty is a curse. I said, poverty is a curse. Talking about you're, you, won't, you won't bear fruit. You know, you're not going to drink of the, 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 uh, the, the vines. You're not going to anoint yourself with the olive oil. Your land's not going to work. It just goes on and on and on. This is a curse. Okay? But Jesus has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So Christ came to, uh, like one guy wrote a book called Reverse the Curse. He came to bring blessing upon us. Amen. So um, go once again to Galatians chapter 3. We, we quoted it on a surface level. Okay. Galatians chapter 3. Glory to God. Now look at um, verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse, the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, where it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on, the tree, on a tree. And then he goes on and says this. Uh, that, now we understand that meaning in order, or so that, or um, in order to cause this to happen, okay, is a, it connects the previous thought with the following thought, and, and this is in this case it actually gives a gives purpose to the previous thought, okay. He redeemed us from the curse of the law, for it's written, "Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree," that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. <clears throat> that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, brethren, Paul writes to the church at Galatia, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, though it be but uh, uh, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now, so you can't add to it and you can't take away from it. Man cannot add to and man cannot take away from. Amen what God says. We don't get the right to do that. Okay. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Now stop. One of the arguments you will hear in opposition to the things we see in the Old Testament, the blessings of God and God causing this to happen. And you know, the, you're going to be blessed coming in and blessed going out is that's for the Jews. Okay, that's for the Jews. So Paul writing by inspiration of the Spirit, how the holy men wrote as the Spirit of God moved on them. Peter, in talking to Paul about Paul, says, who writes many things hard to be understood, amen, that they which are unlearned do rest, W-R-E-S-T, the Scriptures. Okay? Okay? Peter called Paul's writing scripture. So we already got internal evidence um, from a, one of the chief apostles of the church. Many would say the lead apostle until Paul came that Paul wrote scripture. Okay. And so he says, now to Abraham and his seed, so that's a good thing to underline, were the promises made. He said not, or saith not, and to thy seeds, plural, as of many, but as of one, and thy seed, and to thy seed, which is 
Christ. So the, all the promises of Abraham, Paul bringing clarity. See, we want to ma we, we major on, uh, and the Old Testament covers this, the, the uh, lineage of Abraham being under blessing or cursing. They were in and out. I mean, you know, they come along, get them a good king, and they serve God. Okay, he died, the bad king. They go serve the idols of the land. They were, they, they, they were a bipolar nation. Okay? They were over here and over there, over here and over there, over here and over there. <clears throat> but the truth of the matter is that the true blessing of Abraham was to Abraham and to his seed, Christ. Why? Why was it really to a spiritual seed? Because God came God's plan was to redeem all mankind, not just the lineage of Abraham. Amen? We can't do that through natural genealogy. If the promise is made to Abraham in his natural genealogy only, then he can't bless the Gentile. Okay? His plan was a redemption for all. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of Christ. Amen? And so he says there, and to Abraham and to his seed, amen, not, and, and to, not to seeds as of many, but as of one which is Christ. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. Now, someone asked me the other day, you know, um, well, there's this a Nigeria, some Nigerian, I mean, maybe Nigeria, African nation has, um, you know, uh, passed a law that all homosexuals shall be killed. And he quoted the Bible and, and then a man at Ted Cruz, because he, he didn't like that law, said it was wrong. And uh, this, this, this pastor was saying, you know, well, what about Le Leviticus and the Bible? And he's trying to pin me down into a corner. And I said, well, you know what? The Bible says the law was added to bring us to Christ. I said, but we're not under the law. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. No. Do I think we should pass laws to kill homosexuals? Absolutely not. I said, absolutely not. It's homosexuality and sin. Yes. But so is adultery. Hello. So is... Um, Envying your neighbor's property. Come on. So is using the name of the Lord thy God in vain. We can go through a whole list of stuff. Amen. So we're not murdering or, or killing, you know, somebody because they ran off and, and committed adultery with somebody else. No, as a matter of fact, a lot of that bunch celebrates that. Amen. Some of these same preachers that are saying that are running around with the secretary. I do too. I do it all the time because my wife is a secretary. <laughs> we've got, we've had an ongoing 42 year relationship. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. It's going to keep on going too. <clears throat> Amen. Praise God. And, um, but I, I'm not having a relationship with the organist or the, um, you know, anybody else. She don't play the organ. If she did, I have one with her too. Okay. But the, the law could not disaffirm or disannul the promise. For if the inheritance be of the law, it's no more promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained of angels by the hand of a mediator. Now, Go on down, um, verse 27, for as many of you as been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, for there is neither Jew nor Greek, neither bond nor free, neither male nor female, for you're all one in Christ Jesus. Now, he is not saying we're unisex. He is saying that in Christ Jesus, everyone has equal standing. You want equality? Get in Christ. 
Become born again. Amen? It doesn't matter if you're male or female, Jew or Greek. Amen? Hallelujah. Whether you're a free man or a bound man, in Christ Jesus, we're all on equal footing. We all have access to the covenant. Glory to God. I said amen. So you, you, you want to preach something that, that, that goes against racism, that goes against, um, you know, misogynicness or whatever, all the buzzwords they use today, preach Christ. Because when you come into Christ, it doesn't matter what your natural physical being is, you are on equal footing before God through Jesus Christ. Amen. God's not going to listen to Joe any more, more, because he's a male than he is to Marion, who's a female. He's not going to listen to a Messianic Jew more than he listens to a heathen Gentile who both got saved. The Messianic Jew does not have more standing before God than a heathen Gentile. When they both get saved, they stand on the same footing. That's what the Bible says. Okay? So, you know, don't get caught up in some of that. I know that there's a lineage of, of you know, there's some things about the natural, natural line of Abraham that are still in effect. I get that. But the main thing is we come to Christ. Do y'all know who the church, early church was? All the things we hear preached about in the Bible, and they were Jews. It was a number of years before the church became Gentile, before the Gentiles were in the church. So a lot of our you know, major revelations and, and positions on the church were written to Jewish Christians, but they were called Christians at Antioch. Okay? So there's not a higher standing. And that's what the Scripture is telling us. It doesn't matter if you're a male or female. It doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Greek. When, it doesn't matter if you're bond or free. When you come into Christ, you're on equal footing. All right? Now, <clears throat> next verse. And if you be Christ, and this is possessive, Christ, apostrophe, yes, Christ, possessive, then are ye Abraham's seed singular and heirs according to the promise. Now back up over there to verse um, 16, now to Abraham and to his seed where the promise is made. So all the promises of blessing, all the promises of what God was going to do was made to the seed of Abraham. And that seed is Christ. But, glory to God. Here's the big but. And I'm not talking about the song, The Birth of Butts Boogie. <laughs> Great song from the 70s. Do you remember it, Dick? You missed disco, huh? No, you, you were here before disco. You, uh, did you not hook up with disco? Just a little. So you don't remember the Birth of Butts Boogie. Okay. I don't know why I remember it. But I could sing it at one time. I have tried to forget it until that very moment. <coughs> but the great blessing here is that it was made to Christ. It doesn't matter if your lineage is natural born Hebrew. It doesn't matter if you were Greek. It doesn't matter if you were a woman. It doesn't matter if you were a slave. And none of those things matter because the seed was not made to you. I mean, promise was not made to you. It was made to Christ. But when you are born again, amen, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore if any man be in Christ, Amen. He's a new creature. Amen. And so just like Paul writes here in verse 29, and if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed? So what? That means all the promises were made to you. And heirs according to the promise. You're an heir of the promises. Whatever that promise is, it was made to you. Because you're in Christ. See, we, that's why. Now, you can't mess it up. Because if you mess it up and get out of Christ, Christ still has the promises. Because they are made to him. So they're sure. They're steadfast. It doesn't matter if half the church rebels and goes against God. The promise is to Christ. And anybody that comes into Christ is an heir of that promise. 
you can't undo it. You can't mess it up like Adam did in the garden. It's just You can't do it. You know, because the covenant between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So, we read earlier from Deuteronomy 28, we found out that violating God's word and bringing curses on you was a curse of the law. Right? And so poverty came into the earth <coughs> because people violate God's principles and God's laws. But we are redeemed from the curse of the law. Poverty does not have the right to rule and reign over us by, um, by force. We have to align ourselves with poverty to walk in poverty. We can align ourselves with the promise and walk in blessing. Amen. I said amen. Um, we, we already read that the blessing of Abraham might come with Gentiles through faith. Look at Romans chapter 4, I believe it is. Hallelujah. I got it in my head kind of. I don't have the full thing in there because it's not what I was just getting ready to run through. It's not in my notes. When that happens, I have to go. Okay. Yeah, just back. I didn't go down far enough. Okay. Okay. I wasn't highlighting with the other stuff. Um, verse 16, Romans 4, 16. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. Notice it didn't say to all the seeds. What does this mean? Well, all the seeds, all, which is a plural. The seed, which is singular. What's it talking about? The seed is Christ. And if you, you know, and if you be Christ, then you're Abraham's seed. Not to only that which is of the law, but that also which is of faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Now, he's, he's, Separating here, the law is the, is the natural lineage, but those who are faith, amen. So Paul's making it very clear here that it is the faith people who are this, uh, also receiving of the seed of Abraham. As it is written, I've made thee the father of many nations before whom he believed, even God, who makes the dead alive and calls those things which be not as though they were. Now, Weymouth says, um, who makes reference to things that do not exist, as though they did, which we could have tied into Sunday service on healing. Okay, we're talking about not calling those things which are as they weren't, which is denial. We call those things which be not as though they were. We are declaring a higher law over something. And that includes your finances. That works on your finances. I ain't broke. Oh, really? How much money you got in the bank? Nothing. How much money you got in your pocket? Nothing. You got any money anywhere? Nope. Then you broke. Amen? Well, you can't say I'm not broke. That's not, that's not, but you are. But I can put into force the higher law. Amen? Isn't that right? That um, I'm blessed coming in and blessed going out. My God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. I've tithed and I've given. I may be currently no money, but I've tithed and I've given. Therefore, the windows of heaven be opened up and they pour on me blessings that I don't have. I declare the promises of God over my, my, my finances. Amen. Okay. And so he says here, um, as it is written, I made thee the father of many nations, before whom he believed, even God, who makes alive the dead, makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. Okay? So here we are. There's a promise made. Amen. Glory to God. And 
The promise of God to Abraham was what? In blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thee. Again, Weymouth in that particular verse says, I will bless thee and bless thee and increase thee and increase thee. This is just some things that Weymouth says. I love the way he says them. Okay? And, um, and so he said that I will bless thee and bless thee and increase thee and increase thee. Well, isn't that great? To be blessed and increased? Amen? I want to be blessed and increased, don't you? Anybody here want to be blessed and increased? All right. 2 Corinthians 8 9 says, For you know by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that what? Through his poverty you might be made rich. Now, we're going to follow in here that same line of thought of he became sick so we could be well. He became sin so we could become righteous. He became poor that through his poverty we might be made rich. Well, I was talking about spiritual blessings, brother. Well, in one sense of the word, yeah, but it's also about natural. I said, it's talking about natural. Why? Because we know that Abraham was blessed naturally, abundantly. You know, make us sing David Engel songs. Amen. Lift up your eyes and look from the place where you now stand, north, south, east, and west. I've given you the land. To thy seed forever, God promised Abraham, I will make thy faith see number as the sand, do, 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 do. Well, I'm of the seed of Abraham, and his blessings rest on me. I'm of the seed of Abraham, I'm not moved by what I see. Jesus was made a surety, and that's what I believe. He's the seed of Abraham, and his seed remains in me. I bless you going out, and bless you coming in. Even the length and breadth of where your foot has been, to thy seed forever, God promised Abraham, and I will thy faith see. No, no, no. Um, and in their generation, I'll bless exceedingly. And I'm the seed of Abraham. Okay. <clears throat> That's enough. My voice is not. David Ingalls goes in the keys I can't get into, and um, especially my voice is froggy. Why are you froze? Fro I sat under the air conditioner at work all day. They had it on polar. Okay? We're talking like they thought we were the North Carolina Aquarium for the polar bears. Janie, on the other hand, was down in the South American exhibit <laughs> at the equator. Same building, just like the North Carolina Zoo. Same park. All right. We're the seed of Abraham. Isn't that right? Amen. Glory to God. Christ became poor for us that through his poverty we might be made, be made rich. The promise of prosperity is found in Christ. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. He took our poverty. It's too, you know, now I grew up Pentecostal and, you know, we, 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 we wore red badges of courage. I don't want any of this old world's goods, brother. I just want a log cabin over in the corner of heaven. Hallelujah. And you're out there singing, working hard for the money. Working hard for the money. Come on. Out there, I mean, you know, doing everything you can to figure out how to get more money. Well, stop lying. You don't want any of this old world's goods. You're just trying to come up with excuses why you don't have anything. And God's made provision for you to have, to live in blessing. Amen? Now, <clears throat> there are certain principles that we need to engage in. Remember, if you, you know, um, if you want to be blessed, 
we go walk according to his word. Now, Malachi says, bring all the tithe and, all, tithe and offering into the storehouse and prove me now here with, saith the Lord of hosts, that if I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and, and pour out a blessing upon you, you will not have room enough to receive. Now, we've quoted that. We've told you this numerous times. If you look in your Bible, uh, besides what it says pour out, and it says a little number, and you go over to the margin, and it says Hebrew, empty out. In my Bible, it has that in the margin, empty out. He's going to empty out on you blessings. You don't have room enough, room enough to receive. Well, is that scriptural? Well, how shall he who spared not his own son, not also with him, give us all things pertaining to life and godliness? Amen. God wants you blessed. I said, God wants you blessed. Now, he doesn't, he doesn't want you living in lasciviousness. There are people right now that if they, got a, if they won the lottery, Pastor, I'll be bringing the tithe by next week. Pastor, I'm sorry. I, I'm, in, um, you know, I'm at Cape Hope off the coast of uh, Africa, the southern coast. Is that where Cape, is it Cape, Cape Hope, Africa or South America? Uh, huh? Cape Good Hope? Okay, Cape Good Hope. I'm, yeah, I'll be back. I'll be back six months. I'll tithe then. Three years later, you get a postcard. <laughs> Three years later, you get nothing. Hello, are you here? Well, God wants to pour out blessings on you. You won't have room enough to receive. Amen. Anybody wants you to have the right heart with it. Amen. Just want, just don't want you to spend it lasciviously. Glory to God. Oh, if I had enough money, I'd tithe. I told one church member one time, they came to my office and they were struggling financially. And I looked at them and they, it's not easy as a pastor to say some things. And they said, I can't afford to tithe. I said, you can't afford not to tithe. Now they took that word and started tithing. And within one to two years, not only were they completely turned around, they were making more money after tithing than they were before not tithing. And it kept going up. So they, they, got, they got in a whole lot different position by obeying the word of God. Amen. So bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, that if I will not open up the wind, <laughs> open them up. And pour out blessings, empty out blessings. You don't have room enough to receive. Glory to God. Now, let me say something. The promise. Is, why don't some things just work? Because everything we do is by faith. Hebrews chapter 10 says that the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith. Amen. You got to mix faith with it. Well, I'm just going to put the money in there and, you know, because I'm told I have to. We don't give negrudgingly our necessity for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. I said, amen. I don't go and I got to give this week and I really, I wanted to buy hurricane tickets. Well, I do too. Man, I would not have a season ticket right there on the glass. You know anything about hockey? That is the place to be. <clears throat> I know. So that when they have a fight, you're right there. <laughs> then when the generals were here, after the, after the Kings left, the generals came in for a few seasons. They had a minor league team. We got, we got one night, we got tickets on the glass. And they had a fight right there. <laughs> oh, this is cool. <laughs> you know, minor league hockey has more fights. Yeah, may, might be having one right now. The Canes are playing right now. I wonder, can we get it? Let's see if they're fighting. No, no I'm teasing. <laughs> Amen. Um, but timing's not New Testament. Uh, okay. Why don't we go to Hebrews chapter 7? And I've heard people try to explain this away. I think you got to stretch it to explain it away. Hebrews, the seventh chapter. And be quite honest with you, why would you fight against 
what God says to do, and that if you do it, you're going to be blessed by it. Okay. Hebrews 7. I oh, believe better start in verse 1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, pre priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him. To him also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. That's a tenth. That's what? What's a tenth? That's the tithe. <clears throat> being first, uh, being by first by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is the king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth now a priest continually. Now stop. He's just saying that did not say that Abraham that Melchizedek was um, virgin birth, supernatural. It's saying they don't have a they they did not have a recording of any of his genealogy because he was allegorical of who Christ would be. Okay, it was it was there was, sim there was symbolism involved in his lineage. We know he was born from somebody. We just don't know who they were. Okay. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. And verily they are the sons of Levi, who received the office of the priesthood, had a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is of their brethren though they came out of the loins of Abraham. Okay. So the law told them that they had to, the priesthood was to receive the tenth. But that's where people try to make this the thing. It was all about the priesthood. But this, this passage undoes all that. And verily they that are the sons of Levi receive the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take the tithes of the people according to the law, that is of their brethren, that though they came out of the loins of Abraham. But he whose descent is not counted from them that received tithes of Abraham and blessed him, that had the promises without contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Now, what's he saying? Abraham paid tithes. Levi paid tithes to Melchizedek, even while they were in the loins of their father, Abraham. Abraham paid tithes out of blessing. The Levites received tithes out of the law. We are not under the law. Well, that's law, but I'm not under the law. I'm under the blessing. I'm under the promise. Abraham gave tithe out of the promise to the one, and we'll go and find out, who is a type of Christ. Um, without contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And here men that die receive tithes. That's talking about the priesthood. But there he receiveth them, receiveth tithes. Let me go, I'm just jump over there. Of whom it's written that he liveth. Well, who liveth? Who lives there that liveth? Jesus. And I say so, and I may say so. Levi also, who received tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Okay? Where? Okay. Where do you get the idea that we no longer tithe? Because if he that liveth receiveth them, not past tense, receiveth them, how can he receiveth that which you doeth not? You have to doeth it for him to receiveth it. Is that King Jimmy enough? enough? Amen? If he receiveth present tense, that means... We're in the book of Hebrews. We're in the New Testament. It says after the resurrection of Christ. This is not under the Old Testament. If he receiveth them, then that means we are supposed to be giving them. Amen? Can you see that? Why? Because Abraham tied to Melchizedek, who is a type of Christ. Okay? We're the seed of Abraham. We tithe into the one who's a priest forever after the order. Now, you're going to read this chapter. You'll find he is a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Jesus is not a priest after the order of Levi. Jesus is not a priest after the order of the law. He's after the order of the promise. Amen? And Melchizedek blessed him as he gave the tenth of the spoils. When we bring the tenth to Jesus, we're blessed by Jesus. Amen. 
Glory to God. Now, the purpose of the tithe is to, is, is to run the church, to pay, to, pay staff, pay, to pay ministers. That's what it was in the Old Testament. You know, they, it, it ran, the, ran the temple. It paid the priest staff. <laughs> that was their inheritance. Okay? All right, preachers don't need all that money. Well, no, I don't need all the tithe. Well, that'd be nice. I'd make it a good chunk of change. I know some churches have done that. Pre the pastor gets the tithe, and then they take up a second offering for the expenses of the church. Uh, that's stretching it. I said, that's stretching. I mean, I, can't, I don't see that as New Testament. Okay? But, and you, guess, you really get some people who are really upset that the preacher make too much money. You know? I mean, some churches, boy, he, 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 got, a, he got a used car that's it's only two years old. Forget getting a new one. You'd have a church split. They'd have an emergency board meeting. You know, he's making too much money. Let's, let's reduce his salary. He's driving a brand new car. Okay. So the tithe is important. Amen? But here, men do it. Under the Levitical law, men are receiving it, but the Bible wants us to give to Jesus. Tithe to the church. So the work of God can be done. Amen? Secondly, giving. Tithing is commanded. Giving is optional. You give optionally out of your heart because you want to. You love the church. You love the work of God. You love the people of God. You love uh, establishing things in a way that can go do the will of God in the earth. You want to see people saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, healed, delivered, amen? And so you, you support, you know, the work of God so that it can minister those things to people, amen? Now, I'm, I'm looking forward to the day that, you know, I'm back out of working, sec being bivocational, okay? Not so I can do nothing, but I can give my more attention to the, thing, to the church, to the work of God. I'm really looking forward to it. Looking forward to my wife joining me. Amen. Amen. Now look, we went a long time where we, we worked just for the church. But that, that it got to a point we couldn't do that anymore. Well, we did what we needed to do so the church could survive. Because we wanted to. We wanted, we wanted, I still want to preach. Amen. So I did. I've been cussed out. So I can preach. Not, not you're just, you know, um, SOB or something like that. I mean, F-bombs. I mean, just nasty stuff. You know, threatened and having to put my flesh under. Because my flesh wanted to go, you look young buck. The old buck still got something left in the tank. And I will hurt you fast. I will beat you in the face with my head. That's how you want to, you know, that's how you want to respond. You know, but I didn't. I never did it to anybody. I did think about it. I had to cast down that imagination to the knowledge of Christ. Amen. Okay. You know, because it was exalting itself against the knowledge of God. So I had to know, down, boy, down. But I went through that, and I've done that so that the church could go, and the church could grow. Amen. So being bi bivocational was not my ideal, but it was necessary. Paul made tents. Amen. <clears throat> Some people just think, well, ministry is about, you know, having money and traveling and being big. And, you know, um, if that's the heart of the people, then they're wrong. Because the, the people have to be the heart, of, uh, the heart of why you do what we do. People have to be the heart of what we do. So if I have to work a job, I work a job. Because people have to be reached. People have to be touched. Amen? We have a purpose. We have a calling. We have, a, we have something God has for us to do. So Jesus told them, give. Now, so now we're, we're beyond tithing. Amen. I don't believe in tithing. I just give offerings. That is great as long as what you're doing is over 10%. Because up to the first 10%, you're tithing. After that, it's free will offerings. Okay. I gave 12% to the church last year. 10% of it was your tithe. That is 10, you gave 2% to the church. The other 10% was the tithe. 
Amen. Trying to be semantic with it, but let's just follow the word of God. Because there's blessings on tithing, there's blessings on giving. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, but uh, give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give into your bosom? Now look, God's not going to grow a money tree in your backyard. We're not going to walk back out here at the back of the property and find a tree with $100 bills all over it. It'd be like that movie. So it's an old movie. Guy had a money tree in his backyard. And when the leaves fell off, they wilted. Like leaves do. They, they died, dried up. Anybody ever see that movie? Okay. I don't remember what it's called. I just remember the movie. Okay. I don't even bother looking at Dick. He was a California boy. I mean, he's out of doing surf city, here we come. <laughs> he, you like that kind of music, right? Yep, yep. yep. Yeah. See, we, we have Carolina Beach music. They have California Beach music. I'm not even going to try to compare them. They're not comparable. I like California Beach music, but it's just not as groovy as Carolina Beach music. I'm just picking at Dick right now. Yeah, he, I can see him with a Woody. I can see him with a surfboard on top of the car. Uh, yeah, I can see that. Yep. His electric guitar. Amen. All right. It should be given to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Look, we're seeing the ways to break the curse of poverty. It's been given to us. We're there. So we obey God's word and we tithe and we give. And the blessings that were promised to us come on us. Now, Malachi, Malachi is very interesting. Look at Malachi. Because we didn't read all of Malachi. Amen. And if you're Italian, go ahead. It's the prophet Malachi. All right. Malachi. Hey. We just went to uh, Times Square Pizza on the way to church tonight and walked in. Maria. Hey, by the hey, hey. And then he starts singing. He's got on some Italian channel, and he's about there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, <laughs> okay, Mario. He, yeah, it don't take him much. He is loud. Italians are loud. <coughs> and I am, here we go. Malachi. Verse 3, chapter 3, verse 8. Will a man rob God? Now, you know you're not going in there with an AK-47 to the throne room and robbing God, chunking off some of the streets of glory and hauling them out. Okay? There's no heist like that going on. All right? Yet, ye have robbed me. But you say, well, where have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. And you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now, what, what was God going back to? He was going back to the curses of not doing what he told him to do. Bring all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now here with, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open unto you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And listen to what God says. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. He shall not destroy the fruits of thy ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord. Um, look at this list. Your words have been stout against me. And you say, what have we spoken so much against you? You said, it is vain to serve God, and what profit is it that we have kept his ordinances that we walk mournfully before the Lord. Wow. Did you read that? Your words have been stout against me. I tried that time, then it didn't work. That's stout against God. God said that's stout against him. Why should I, why should I do that? All them preachers want is buy money. You got it wrong, baby. God wants your money. 
And I said, God wants your money. Why? Because it positions you to receive the response that he promised. He, you remember the rich young ruler that came to Jesus and said, Lord, what must I do to receive eternal life? He said, go ahead, sell all that you have, give to the poor, take up your cross and follow me. And he went away because he had much riches. He left. Now, there is a major theological vein that believes that young man was Barnabas. And that later he came back. Now, I don't know how they, they if from a church history and study, that there was, there was evidence or uh, a pointing that, that was Barnabas. Okay. But what Jesus was trying to do was teach him uh, not to live from that which he either inherited or gained with his own hands, but to learn how to live by faith and have more than he had before. He wanted to get him more than he ever had before. Because what, what good does it do is we, if we take everything we get and build storehouses, big barns, and put it in there and hoard it up? When the kingdom of God needs it to preach the gospel. Amen? I said amen. So God wants to rebuke the devourer for your sake. He wants you blessed. Amen? I mean, Haggai 2.8 says, The silver is mine, the gold is mine, saith the Lord. That one preacher said, um, the, 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 uh, the gold and the silver are mine, the cattle is mine, and the, uh, on all the hills, and, and the taters under them. <laughs> the taters belong to them too. Amen? God has the resources. Like we said in prayer, if you haven't been in prayer with us, you would have missed this. You know, on our prayer meeting, we're praying out, paying off the church. The Lord said a couple weeks ago, he said, the church needs to be paid off. And I'm like, well, Lord, why? I mean, we're, you know, we, we got the mortgage down. We need to grow. And he said, there's, there, are, there are things that are going to come into alignment when the building gets paid off that you're going to walk in. You're going to take another step up. So put your faith out there to pay it off. So we're praying, we're praying that out. Just like he told us to pray about land and building and so forth, he's now telling us to pray out the payoff. Because as we do, we're coming into alignment with something else. See, he's not just having us pay off the building so we'll be mortgage-free, so we can sit around and go, well, we don't have any mortgage. Isn't that great? We're coming into alignment to something else. And God wants you to tithe and to give so that the blessings can come so you come into alignment with a greater purpose to be able to fund the gospel and to do the work of God. There's just so much that, that you know, we have to be aware of that when God gives us a commandment, or God tells us to do something, it's not just for the moment. This is where we got off in prosperity. It became about the moment. It became about our us time. You know? It became about our yachts and our houses and our lands and our hand-tailored suits and our cobbler-made shoes, you know, and the flights to everywhere in first class, of course. On these foreign airlines, they have um, birthing cabins, birth, B-E-R-T-H, not B-I-R. You know, had births. Your bed, you got a bed that lays down with a TV, pull the curtain up, put your jammies on, and sleep for your over flight, overnight flight. Now, that's the way to fly. Haven't done it yet, but I think that, well, I like that. You know? And they'll, they'll tap on your, beside your screen to bring you breakfast in bed. I like that. Hallelujah. You bring a little button, they'll bring you your, you know, your Coke or your, you know, whatever, your water, whatever you ask for, they'll bring it to you. And they even give you slippers. They'll let you walk, you put on your bedroom slippers and, you know, go to the, go, go to the uh, bathroom and, you know, in your bedroom slippers. Well, that's all it is. That's great. That's great. But God's not just trying to position you that all you're doing is consuming all upon, you know, you living a high life. He's aligning you with something greater than the moment. He's aligning you with something that, that is transformative in eternity. People's, people's lives. Amen. 
so that great wealth comes so we can do great things, greater things for the kingdom. We do what we're called to do right now. But when we, so anyway, our teaching got so self-centered. Oh, we throw in the, we're going to fund the gospel on it. But what people were thinking was, I'm net, Robin Leach's next guest star on the lifestyles of the rich and famous. Hi, I'm Robin Leach. Welcome to Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Today, we're going to be visiting with Rita Adams on her $20 million yacht at Nassau, Bahama. Yeah. She's even going to let us have a tour of her boat. Because it's not a boat, it's a, it's a, it's a yacht. Yes. See, we start thinking about just having all this stuff for us. Now listen, do you really need a $20 million yacht? It's not that the $20 million yacht is wrong. It's that $19 million could build churches all over the world. Now, we've got to be, see, we gotta be careful. We don't want to get too far over the other way where, you, you know, we can't have anything. Lord, you keep them poor, we'll keep them. I mean, you keep them uh, humble, we'll keep them poor. That's, that's not, that's, that's wrong. But when we start going straight to us, we've missed the mark. We've missed the mark. Because we've got to fund the gospel. Amen. And God wants you blessed in the process. God wants you to have. God doesn't want you, you don't have to live paycheck to paycheck. Amen. You don't have to live with a shooting up the house. Come on. I mean, there's nothing wrong with wanting to live somewhere where you're not getting bullet holes in your door at night. I mean, I get that. I mean, your angels are really busy. Amen. <laughs> your angels are probably thinking, look, just believe God so we can get out of this neighborhood so I can take a break. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. <coughs> so poverty is a part of the curse, and God has ways that, you know, he's, he's, he's given us through Jesus Christ prosperity. We obtain it by obeying his word. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And in that process, we align ourselves with the plan of God in areas we don't even understand right now. Amen. All right. So we're going to wrap right here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you all for joining us tonight. We're about to give. If you need an offering envelope for the in-house giving, reach out there. Uh, envelopes on the seat back in front of you. Giving um, through one of our uh, electronic means, um, cash app or PayPal. You can go ahead and get that. Uh, there may be a third one coming. We've got to get that checked out because um, we're launching our uh, church app December the 3rd. We go live with the church's app. You will have to download the Expedition Church app with a little logo on your screen and tap on it, and it gives you all the information about the church, about what's going on, you know, videos, um, upcoming events. Um, I'm going to eventually have a blog on there. All kinds of things are going to be on our app. Hallelujah. Uh, it's in beta mode right now, and it's getting close. Um, a few things we have to take care of. But one of the, one of the uh, things that the app does is you can give through their tithely giving. And we're going to look and see how that works. You know, you know if, it's, uh, if it's more, if it's, it's equal to or at least as good as doing it through Cash App or PayPal, then we can get that set up. Because that allows you to text to give. You can go in there and text um, building fund and the amount, and it'll go right into our, it'll come right into us saying it's for the building fund. Okay? You want, you want, all you do is put, you'll just text, give, because you'll be in the app and you text to give and you just, you don't have to do anything else. You just put give or building fund or missions, capital, then the amount, boom. But we don't know. Uh, all the ins and outs of that yet. So I've got to check on that. I've got to find out basically the transfer fee, if it's higher, if it's, or if it's, if it's when margins that are close enough, and how often they pay. Uh, now, you know, if it's three months, I ain't doing it. Then I'm not going to hold our money for three months, you know, not even 30 days. Cash pays, cash that pays right then. I used to have my phone up here, here go, 
you would just give it out there and it would hit the phone right then. And so uh, I like that. Yeah. Coin in the coffer rings. Another soul from purgatory sings. <laughs> that really was a saying back in, uh, uh, yeah, from purgatory sings. Yep. You could buy them out of purgatory. Yep. All right. Ready to give? Father, we bless the people of the time and give according to your word. Thank you that what your word says is true, and we receive it done now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Brother Joe. Take the in-house. Praise God. And uh, thank you all for joining us. Remember to these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. See you next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad. Have a great day.